Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts now. Slow and steady, Governor Gretchen Whitmer extends Michigan's stay-at-home order. We know that if we do it too fast, a second wave is likely and would be even more devastating than the moment that we are in. Now at 7, we're taking a closer look at her strategy to stop the spread as well as sharing what is and is not allowed under her revised executive order. 7 o'clock on a Saturday. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sean Lay. And I'm Priya Mann. As coronavirus case counts hit a plateau, the governor makes some changes in her latest executive order. It is a big weekend because people can do quite a few things like hit the lawn and garden stores and work their yards really for the very first time. And if you don't really do it yourself, lawn and landscaping services can now operate again and fire up right away as long as they follow social distancing guidelines. Yeah, starting May 1st, golf is also getting the green light, but the the use of carts is not permitted. Let's talk about this motorized boating allowed once again. That means walleye fishermen will be on the river this morning. You'll find a full list of the changes made by the new executive order at clickondetroit.com. We will also take a more in-depth look at our coronavirus updates in just a moment. But first, let's check in with Paul. And Paul, I know that you can't wait to get back on the golf course. I can't even begin to tell you how much I, I want to get out there. Remember, <laughs> I lost all of last summer because I had rotator cuff surgery. So I haven't golfed in two years. I'm really itching to get out there. So unfortunately, I'm working this weekend, but I'll get some time during the week next week. Uh, all right, temperatures right now, there is quite a difference across the area. Up in the thumb, you're only near 30 degrees. But then down in uh, Lenaway County, it, it is in the low 40s right now. That's just because of the advancing cloud cover. But as far as rain goes, there is no rain in the area right now. It is a dry start to the day, and many of us to the north and northeast are getting some sunshine. But you can see there is some rain. We've kind of switched over to the Indianapolis, well, actually the Northwebster Indiana radar there, the northern Indiana radar. And you can see the showers breaking out to our south. Now, I think the lion's share of that will stay to our west today. But Lenaway Monroe counties, I think you are going to see some showers develop during the mid to late morning hours hours and then they will kind of dissipate during the afternoon. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. But uh, temperatures today getting into the upper 50s. That is not too bad. So most of us looks like uh, we'll have a dry day, be able to get out on the golf course and uh, you know hit the backyard, do some gardening. So we'll talk more about the, the rest of the forecast and the Sunday forecast straight ahead, guys. Paul, thank you very much for that. Let's get you updated now on the very latest on COVID-19 here in Michigan. Yeah, there are new signs of progress. State officials say despite the increase in daily cases this week, the rate of growth is continuing to slow while testing rates continue to rise. Michigan also started reporting recoveries this month with now more than 3,200 reported recoveries in the past 30 days. Here's a breakdown of our current case count. As of our last update on Friday, there were 108 confirmed deaths from COVID-19 within a 24-hour period. That's between Thursday and Friday. In total, we've lost 3,085 people to the virus. Michigan now has more than 36,000 confirmed cases. This is up 1,350 cases from Thursday. But again, experts are saying the rate of growth is continuing to slow while testing rates continue to rise. New updates have been coming mid-afternoon every day. We will bring you the update to you the moment we get it both on air on, and on clickondetroit.com. Now back to the revised executive order that we've talked about at the beginning of the show. It's now been one month since Governor Gretchen Whitmer first issued the original stay at home order. That's right. So let's talk about what the governor talked about Friday, extending that order for three more weeks through May 15th. But the order does lift some restrictions, allowing non-essential businesses to reopen to offer curbside pickup. Yeah, that's important to note. It starts May 1st. Lawn and landscaping services can also operate as long as they follow social distancing guidelines. Golfing and motorized boating are allowed. Here's Governor Whitmer, who says the new order also makes it mandatory to wear face coverings in public spaces indoors. The order I signed today requires that everyone wear a covering over their nose and mouth like a homemade mask or scarf or bandana or handkerchief when they are in an enclosed public space. To be clear, when you go to the grocery store or to the pharmacy or to any store that's open during this time, you need to wear a face mask. If you're in an outdoor area, this order doesn't require that you wear one, but you should consider it anyway. 
Now be sure to stay close because at 730 our own Dr. Frank McGeorge going to share his new research on how to make a homemade mask absolutely more effective. You don't want to miss this potentially life saving information from Dr. McGeorge. Meanwhile, on Detroit's west side, more of this police detaining more than two dozen people for drag racing overnight and ticketed people for not keeping social distance. This was the scene late last night near I-96 in Warren. Police say they received multiple complaints about people drag racing, drifting and driving recklessly. Officers impounded at least 10 vehicles. They have a message for anyone thinking police aren't serious about this. We're not going to tolerate this out here, especially during this COVID. We're not going to have people get killed on the street doing drag racing, drifting, and just generally driving reckless. We're not going to tolerate it. The action we took tonight is going to demonstrate what's going to happen in these groups of days involved in this activity. Well, in addition to issuing reckless driving tickets, police say they ticketed more than 30 people for violating the governor's social distancing order. And as we discussed earlier, the governor has loosened key restrictions. She's allowing non-essential businesses to open for curbside pickup and delivery. As Mara McDonald reports, for many small business owners, this is a lifeline. The governor gave the word and already landscaping companies are back on the job. Nurseries can ready their plants for sale, but the order goes further than that. Already we've seen curb pickup at restaurants and other retailers like, say, Joanne Fabrics. Now, small businesses across the board can open up for curb pickup and delivery. The economics of the situation are very simple. The more you help small businesses, the more directly those dollars go right back into neighborhoods, right back into other businesses as well. Rachel Lutz owns multiple women's boutiques in Detroit, including the Peacock Room in the Fisher Building, which is known for its beautiful surroundings, special merchandise, and customer attention. How in the world do you translate that into curb pickup? As we do online sales and virtual appointments, we maintain who we are and our brand. And like the Peacock Room is known for very personalized service, and that's not going to change. We're still going to be doing virtual appointments as if you were in the store. Um, you know, building a website is very uh, difficult for a lot of us. So we're going to be starting with heavy social media. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. And it is going to be a different world for these businesses, but even being able to generate some sales instead of nothing can help keep the lights on until the customers can return to stores one day. 707 on a Saturday. Let's turn your attention to this really quite a sight on West Outer Drive Friday evening as scores of police cars, fire trucks and other emergency vehicles formed a lengthy procession to support two of their own first responders. Yeah, Lavandria and E.B. Herbert, two Detroit first responders, lost their five year old daughter Skylar to COVID-19. And as Jason Colthorpe reports, there was outpouring of love and support for this heartbroken family. Yo, yo, Chief, you, you, you hear me, Chief? Block it off. I was like, they about to shut down the city. So once I found out what was going on, kind of put me at ease, and I thought it was a great thing that they were doing. We came down here to, you know, basically pay tribute to. The tribute was for five-year-old Skylar Herbert, daughter of Vani, a Detroit police officer, and Ebby, a Detroit firefighter. She's an angel now. She died Sunday of COVID-19. She's an angel now. And she's smiling down because she always was smiling. It's, it's, it's hard. And we want the world to understand that this is serious. Please take it serious. The fear is, is what we've all feared, yeah. is, is when they go out there, we do everything we're supposed to do, and the enemy came to their front door. The procession of first responders from several agencies spanned six blocks through the Herbert's west side neighborhood. It's really beautiful and it's really nice for Skylar. To Jalea Woods, Skylar's best friend, it felt like a parade she knew she would have loved. We love to play with each other. You know, I she get to um she gets to play with me and I get to play with her every summer. And it is just so hard because she was just the sweetest little girl. The Herberts and couldn't hold back the emotion talking about Skylar and this gesture by their colleagues that was a week in the making. She's the Herbert's baby, but she's Detroit's daughter. And I think the showing of love, how this came together in such a quick fashion, shows that she was loved. That son coming out right now is her. She know her mama is talking right now. And she is coming and let me know, mommy, it is okay. 
It is okay, Mommy. I am still shining bright. Jason Coulthard, Local 4. Still shining bright. Oh, Heartbreaking. Yeah. Little Skyler is the first child to die from COVID-19 here in Michigan. And she certainly was Detroit's daughter. What a beautiful tribute. Let's turn to the national front. There are now more than 905,000 confirmed coronavirus cases here in the U.S. And more than 51,000 Americans, loved ones, have died. This according to a John Hopkins University database. Meanwhile, amid criticism over his comments regarding injecting disinfectants as a possible treatment to be looked into, President Trump taking no questions during his Friday briefing at the White House. Alice Barr has more. As researchers race to find treatments with nothing yet approved, President Trump facing criticism for suggesting scientists look into injecting disinfectants into the human body as a cure. Is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning that you're going to have to use medical doctors with? But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. The president retreating from those comments. But I was asking a sarcastic and a very sarcastic question to the reporters in the room about disinfectant on the inside. But the manufacturer of Lysol says it's already gotten questions about using its products as a treatment, warning, quote, under no circumstances should our disinfectant products be administered into the human body through injection, ingestion, or any other route. I'm concerned we're going to see some bad outcomes if people start swallowing uh, some of these chemicals or putting them on their, their face and their skin. President Trump also suggested researching exposing the human body to internal light and heat as a possible treatment. His own task force coordinator saying she's seen no evidence that would work. That is a treatment. It comes as the FDA is warning doctors against prescribing a malaria drug widely touted by President Trump for coronavirus. The head of the FDA announced that several manufacturers are moving ahead with at-home test kits. But in an unprecedented departure, the president left the room without taking questions. Mr. President. Alice Barr, Local 4. Thank you, Alice. A quick note, our website is packed with useful information to get you through the coronavirus pandemic. It's all at clickondetroit.com. You'll see it on the front page slash coronavirus. It is right. 712, Priya. Yeah, that's right. And we're both watching that beautiful sunrise on those live shots. Paul, you're tracking a gorgeous weekend ahead. Yeah, not too bad. There are going to be a couple of rain chances. One today, you see that right there, and then we have one tomorrow, but it's not going to be rain for all of us, and it's not going to rain all day either day. So we'll break it down for you straight ahead. All right, thank you, Paul. And still to come, members of the Detroit Police Department pay tribute to health care workers. That's right, and there's the chief. Chief Craig says he owes a lot to the workers at Henry Ford Hospital. We'll take you to this scene when we come back.